Hi guys, thanks for tuning into the Yard Sanctuary. So we got all the parts that we need to install our beautiful Vermont casting wood burning stove. But mother nature got in the way. We have a blizzard. We have this huge blizzard and high winds and lots of snow. So we can't we can't we can't work outside to build the chimney for the wood burning stove the only thing we've been doing outside today is shoveling snow well we have a snow blower so yeah that helps but anyhow um so we did do some prep work for the chimney work and we'll share that with you later but today since we can't install the stove I'm going to bring you into my kitchen. We're going to make a flan. That's the Puerto Rican version of a creme brulee. What's up guys? We have all these fresh eggs. So I decided to make some flan. So that's the Puerto Rican version of the creme brulee. So here we go. I got four beautiful fresh eggs. One teaspoon of vanilla. I got a little pinch, pinch, pinch of salt. I'm not even know why it goes in there, but I know that it does. One can of evaporated milk. Um, this one is 12 ounces. And one can of sweetened condensed milk. This one is 14 ounces. It's very thick, it's very sweet. So it's snowing today, there's a blizzard, and I just thought like this would be the perfect thing to do. This is the Puerto Rican version of a creme brulee. So why don't you try to make it? And I'm gonna add a teaspoon, like almost a teaspoonful of starch. And that's just to help it firm up a little bit. And now I'm gonna beat it at high speed until it's well blended. Um, I have no idea how many minutes. So you see all those bubbles on top? I'm just gonna let this sit for a while because I want most of those bubbles to disappear because I don't like my flan with air bubbles in it. And I'm gonna use these different forms to fill, but you can also use a uh, pie pan. I like to use a glass pie pan, but because I'm gonna be sharing some of this um, with people, I'm gonna make individual ones. So while this settles down, I'm going to make um, the caramel. So um, I'll be right back. So I always keep some vanilla bean and some sugar. So this is probably about a cup and a half. I'm gonna start with a cup and I'm gonna dilute it with water and I'm just gonna keep boiling it and boiling it until it turns a nice amber brown color. So I have one cup of sugar and half a cup of water and uh, I'm not sure that's gonna be enough caramel for all the molds that I have, but here's a tip. Um, don't start 
making it as the caramel until you're ready to pour it because it hardens really fast. You don't want to keep the flame on too long because it'll turn too dark and bitter. You want it you want to turn it off just at the right time. But when you do turn it off, you have to pour it into the molds really quickly because it'll caramelize and get hard right in the pot. So I'm not going to start that process until I get rid of all my bubbles because I do not want flan with bubbles. I may, I may need to do a few batches. But we'll see how much I can get out. Here on the side, I'm drying, dehydrating some ginger to make some fresh ginger powder. So this is what I have to do now because um, so because we can't install our wood burning stove. This is what I decided to do: make some flan. Dehydrate some ginger, make some ginger powder, have some fresh ginger tea. So the caramel is like a very, very important part of the flan. So I like to get it just right where it's dark, but not, you know, don't go overboard where it's too dark and it becomes bitter. But I do like it on the darker side. And this is very tricky when you're pouring it. You want to make sure you don't burn yourself. It's very, very hot. It will be very, very hot. I don't use uh, a food thermometer. I just, eye by eyeball, I can tell when it's ready. So it'll be a little while, so I'll get back to it. So I ended up adding a little more... Uh, sugar and it's bubbling it's very very hot soon soon it's gonna start turning into a nice amber color so you can see now that most of the water has evaporated and soon soon it'll start turning a nice brown color as I said before, I like it a little darker, but not too dark where it's bitter. And then I'm gonna move it over to pour it onto the molds. And please, please, please make sure there are no children around or animals around or anyone in your way when you get ready to move this over to the molds. It's very hot. So it's going to get a little dry and kind of crunchy first before it starts to, to liquefy again. After all the water evaporates, it'll get like that. So you just keep breaking it down. Don't freak out. It's going to melt. And then it'll start turning into that beautiful amber color. All right, so I got it to the color exactly, and I'm gonna turn it off and transfer it over to the molds. Got to twirl it all around because it's gonna hard and fast. Oh my gosh, this is not, this is tricky. Your timing has to be right. I have to get my hands out of the way while it's dripping. But yeah. I wanna make sure I don't burn myself. So yeah, you want to twirl it around so that it covers all the bottom and maybe some of the sides. All right, I got to work fast here, guys. This made, this made more than I thought. That's pretty good. Have 
some more here. I think this one gets a little more. myself very tricky so there and now I'm gonna pour the mixture I'm just gonna give it a quick stir in case it's settled so I'm gonna pour the mixture into the molds I made different sizes. This is gonna be good, I can tell. So there are no bubbles, but um, I have a toothpick here, just in case I do see any bubbles, and I'll just pop them. So there. So they're in a pan with water. You set them in water. And I think maybe 30 minutes will do. We'll see. So I'm just gonna check it with a toothpick to see. It's been in here for like 35 minutes and yeah. Uh, let me check these. Don't wanna burn myself with the oven. So they're done. I baked them for like 35 minutes at 350 degrees and I got 10 flans. I got three of the bigger ones, seven of the smaller ones. So now I let them cool and later I'll refrigerate them. So when you go to serve them, you put a plate over it. I like to kind of soak it in a little bit of hot water, the bottom part of the mold, and then put a plate over it and flip it. So it'll come out nice and smooth in one piece, and then the caramel will drip all on the top. And I'll show you what that looks like later. So before I put the plate over it and flip it over, I like to go around and make sure that if there's any hard caramel stuck, that I just smooth just the tip of it, not all the way down, so that it doesn't get stuck when you flip it over and break. Okay, so I put the plate over it. And I just turn it over. Voila, there's caramel in here if you want. You can just run hot water at the bottom of this to melt it and just pour the extra caramel on it, but it's got plenty. Nice. So let's try it. Mm. Nice. Okay, so if I had to be honest, the taste is delicious, the caramel is perfect, but the texture, not my favorite. So this is the first time that I tried it with that almost one teaspoon of starch. That's a new recipe, but that's kind of cheating. I don't like it. I think if I leave out the starch, my old flan would be best and that comes out a little more wobbly not as firm and it's like a creamy smoothness in your mouth 
but uh, yeah so I'm gonna go back to my old-fashioned recipe without the starch thank you guys try it <laughs>